In this video, we'll be exploring pathfinding. We'll be dissecting through some classic pathfinding algorithms before going through, simulating them, and comparing them in the end. In our maze simulation, we'll have the black tiles as passages and the white tiles as passable cells. In addition for each maze, we'll have one star tile and one end tile in red and green respectively. The objective of the maze is to find a path from the red tile to the green tile. And for the purpose of this video, there will always be a path between the red start and the green finish. And importantly, while our pathfinding algorithm is running, we'll be highlighting what node it's searching, expanding, and what the path is when it finally does find one. Briefly speaking, the pathfinding algorithms that we'll be examining in this video all follow the same simple structure. Our first step is to add our initial red cell to the list of cells to be searched. We would then pick a cell from the list of cells to be searched and expand it. During expansion, we would add all the adjacent cells that are actually not walls into our list of search ones. The orders that we add them in are top, right, bottom, and left. And we will repeat this action until either the expanded cell is the destination or there are no cells left in our search. Here's an example of an 8 star run on a very small maze. Today we'll be exploring 4 simple types of pathfinding algorithms. BFS, DFS, Dijkstra, and A star. Let's start off by exploring the simplest of the four, DFS. In DFS, our rule of expansion is to expand the node that was most recently added. In particular, because we add the nodes from top, right, down, and left in that order, we will always be expanding the leftmost node if possible. When it, no longer <clears throat> when it no longer becomes possible to expand the left node, we then go to the bottom node, the right node, and then the top node in that order. In particular, one downside with DFS is that even if the answer is right above it, because it prioritizes nodes in a certain order, it can tend to take the long route and then miss the short path. Moving on to our second pathfinding algorithm, BFS is very similar to DFS, except, however, instead of expanding our most recently added node, we expand our least recently added node. In this example, you can see the expansion of BFS as a wide net that covers every single node that is closest in order. BFS, in contrast to DFS, will always find the optimal route and is much more suited to finding nodes that are very close. However, as you can see, for the routes that are medium range, it can take a long time because it has to expand every single node nearby. Moving on to our third pathfinding algorithm, we want to explore Dijkstra. DFS and BFS tend to be very primitive because the way they choose which cell to expand has no criteria, making it very loose and easy to pick a wrong path. For Dijkstra, we assign each cell that we are about to search with a value. This value will be the distance from their parent to the current cell plus whatever the parent value is. And as you might have guessed, because we can only move in four directions, the value that we always add is 1. While our idea to make a criteria for which cell to expand is great in theory, it doesn't work very well as Dijkstra tends to turn out to search very similarly to BFS. Lastly, we want to talk about A-star. A-star uses the criteria model from Dijkstra while also implementing its own heuristic value in order to make search more accurate. We'll talk more about A star in depth in another video, but in the gist of it, A star tends to take the parent value plus the Manhattan distance away to the target. You can think of Manhattan distance as the amount of nodes from one node to another, assuming that all tiles are walkable. So now that we have a brief overview of all the pathfinding algorithms we'll be competing in, let's simulate them. So in the simulation, we'll be pitting DFS, BFS, Dijkstra, and A star in a head-to-head -head match. So we'll have the same randomly generated maze for each of the four algorithms to run on, and we'll be calculating the distance, nodes expanded, and place that they came in. So we'll be running the simulation 20 times to see who on average gives the best performance.
as we can see from the results, it is clear that DFS, as we can see the results, it is clear that A star on average is the best algorithm out of these four. And in particular, it seems that there is very little difference between Dijkstra and BFS despite the computational differences. With these simulations in mind, there are some additional things we want to keep in mind in terms of pathfinding. First, if we're looking to simulate how a human or an agent can realistically pathfind through something like a maze, this certainly isn't a path. This is especially true if you were to take into consideration a pathfinding algorithm such as BFS or A star. For a human, it simply just isn't realistic to go through each of the added nodes in order. Combined with the fact that humans can't memorize the amount of nodes as well, we need a different algorithm in order to simulate humans. For most problems, A star is the preferred pathfinding algorithm, and for the maze problem, our heuristic is the Manhattan distance. However, depending on the problem, a different heuristic is required in order to get the optimal path. Using the same example below, we can show that by using Euclidean distance instead of Manhattan distance as a heuristic, we also get the same path, but just in a different manner. And in a future video, we'll explore the different types of heuristics that come with much more complicated problems. Lastly, with these classical pathfinding algorithms, we find that the performance does not increase or get any better through progressive runs. This is particularly a problem in algorithms such as A-star or Dijkstra, where we have a heuristic or set value that's actually stored and computed. Thanks for watching.